Hi, today I'm going to explain how to post a supplier invoice with reference to a purchase order in SAP S4HANA and I'm also going to give an overview on the purchasing process from the financial accounting point of view. So I'm going to answer questions such as how can we post the supplier invoice? How can we compare the invoice against the good receipt and the purchase order? How can we book invoices to different suppliers on the same purchase order? And I'm going to demonstrate all this process on SAP S4HANA. From the financial accounting point of view, the purchasing process starts with the creation of the purchase order, which is our agreement with the supplier on what we are going to buy, what is the quantity we are going to buy, and for how much. There is also a lot of other information in the purchase order that's not relevant to us in this video. The second step is the supplier is actually going to send the products to our warehouse and someone in the warehouse is going to receive them. Then he is going to record on the system what he received, what is the quantity he received and with reference to which purchase order and this is our goods receipt. The third step, the supplier is going to send the invoice to the accounts payable accountant and the accountant has to compare the invoice against the purchase order and against the goods receipt. And this is called a three-way matching. So for example, if we agreed with the supplier that we are buying product X for 10 USD, but in the invoice he is trying to charge us for 12 USD, this will be spotted by the accountant. Then he has to contact the supplier and ask why are we being charged for a higher rate. And then if the invoice is approved, he is going to post it. Otherwise, he can inform the supplier that the invoice will not be posted because it's not approved as this is not what we agreed on. Now I'm going to demonstrate on SAP how to create the purchase order, how to do get the goods receipt, and then I'm going to post a supplier invoice. I'm also going to demonstrate how to post separate invoices to separate suppliers on the same purchase order, and also how to handle the value added tax in this process. Now I'm going to start by creating the purchase order. And the purchase order is usually created by someone in the commercial department or in the purchasing department. And remember that this is a video from the financial accounting point of view. So I'm not going to go into all the details of how to create a purchase order. I'm just going to show you how to create a very simple one so we can use it in our testing. And I'm also going to demonstrate the most important functions that are usually requested by the financial accountants in any project. So the transaction we use to create a purchase order is ME21N, enter. And I'm going to insert the vendor number. So this is the vendor I'm going to use. Enter. Now the purchase organization is 1010. The company code is also 1010. And the purchase group is 001. Hit enter again. Then I'm going to insert the material number that I'm going to buy. So this is the one I'm going to buy. Enter. This is the plant I'm going to use, 1010, enter. And I'm going to buy 10 pieces. So for example, let's assume that I am buying chairs from the factory as a store, then I'm going to sell these chairs to my customers. So now I'm going to buy 10 chairs from the factory. The chair is for 80 euros each. So now I'm going to pay 80 euros per chair and I'm buying 10 chairs. So the total amount I'm going to pay is 800 euros. Now, there is also a very important business case that we usually face in all the projects, which is whenever we are buying a product from the supplier, there is a totally different supplier that is responsible for transportation. And this is a transportation agent that will, that will move the products from the factory warehouse to our warehouse. And in most of the cases, the amount of the transportation, the value for transporting the products, should also be included in the cost of my inventory. And the case we face in all the projects is people don't know how to link the transportation cost or the freight cost to the purchase order of the products. So they end up posting a very generic uh, manual invoice at the end of the month for the total value of the freight invoice. And then they allocate this amount manually to the inventory 
which is not correct and not accurate. Actually, there is a way in SAP uh, that you can link the freight expenses to the products you are buying in the same purchase order. And then whenever you are posting the invoice, you can select if you are posting the invoice for the products or if you are posting the invoice for the transportation agent. And it is very, very simple. So this is what I'm going to demonstrate now. So in my example, I'm going to buy the shares. Each chair is going to be for 80 euros plus 2 euros for transportation or freight. So what I'm going to do is, in the item details here, in the conditions, I'm going to go down. And here I'm going to insert a new condition. So I'm going to open the options. And there are two conditions already defined for freight. If you don't have any of these defined in your system, you can ask the materials management consultant to define a freight condition for you. It is a very simple process. Now, the one I'm going to use is this one, freight quantity one. So double click, then hit enter again, and it disappeared. So if you go up, here it is. So now the amount per one share is going to be two euros, enter. So now, as you see, the total amount will be 800 euros for 10 shares and 20 euros for transportation. Now, the second step is I want to define a different vendor for the transportation from the original vendor that we are buying from. So now the one I am buying the shares from ends with 001. This is the supplier number that is going to sell us the shares. And for this one, you can click on the condition for the freight and go to the condition details here. And as you see, you can change the vendor number. So this one came by default as the shares vendor from the purchase order header, but you can change it to any other one. So I'm going to change it to this one, for example. Enter. So now we have two suppliers in the same purchase order. One of them is selling us shares. The other one is a transportation agent. And I'm going to show you how you can book invoices to the supplier of the shares and another invoice to the freight supplier. So go back. So now my purchase order is ready. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post it, click here, and then I'm going to open the message for the purchase order number. So this is the number of our purchase order. So I'm going to copy it. And now we are done with the first step. So now we have a purchase order that we are going to send to the supplier. Then we move to the second step. So in the second step, the supplier is going to send us the products. So I'm going to process a goods receipt. The transaction to process a goods receipt is MIGO. And again, this transaction should be done by someone who is working in the warehouse. So this is like uh, the custodian of the inventory. It's not a financial transaction. So I'm also going to show you an overview of how to post it for the sake of our demo. But this is not something that the financial accountant should know how to do. So the transaction is MIGO. Here I'm going to select goods receipt, purchase order, and I'm going to paste the purchase order number, then hit enter. So now it came from the purchase order that I'm buying this item and the purchase order should be for 10 pieces. This amount can be changed. So for example, if the supplier only sent five pieces now and is going to send the remaining in another time, I can change it to make it five, but I'm going to keep it as is for now and then click on OK and enter the storage location. So this is the storage location where we are going to receive the products. Hit enter. Then you can check the document for any errors or mistakes. So click on check. And SAP has given me the message that the document is OK. So click on post. Now I'm going to display the transaction that we posted so we can see the financial entry. So click on goods receipt, select display. And the document number came by default as the, the last goods receipt we did. So hit enter. Then go to document information and click on FI documents. Double click on accounting document. 
So this is the accounting document we just posted right now. And as you see, we have a debit to the inventory for 820. And this is what I was talking about. So now, as you see, we have posted the transportation or the freight amount to the inventory value, which is correct and which is requested by the financial accounting standards. So now we have the stock debit for 820. And then we have the GRIR credit for 800. And we have another GRIR account credit for 20. This, is, this one is for freight. And these two accounts are intermediary accounts that will be cleared when we post the invoice. So now we are done with step number two. So we have created a purchase order. We sent it to the supplier. Then the supplier has sent us the products and we have posted the good receipt. The third step is I'm going to post the supplier invoices. So I'm going to post two invoices, one for the product or for the chairs that we purchased and the other is for the transportation or for the freight. So the transaction to post a supplier invoice with reference to a purchase order is MIRO. So I'm going to exit this screen. So this transaction is very important to anyone who is working in accounts payable. So the transaction is MIRO and it is different from the other transaction I used before to post a supplier invoice without reference to a purchase order. So uh, to process this transaction, I'm going to hit enter. The company code I'm working with is 1010, enter again. Now the invoice date is going to be the same as the posting date. The reference is going to be, for example, product invoice. Enter. And I can insert the purchase order number here. So I'm going to paste the number then hit enter again. Now, as you see, it came by default that we are buying only one item. The total value is 800 euros and the amount I'm buying is 10 pieces. So we are buying 10 pieces of this one item. And then here you have the purchase order number and you have the item number. If you check here, you are going to find the supplier number. So this one is ending with 001. This one is for the products. So this is the product supplier. Now, if I am willing to post the invoice for the freight or for the transportation, all you have to do is to go here to the item type, open this one and select plan delivery cost. So once I click on plan delivery cost, hit enter. Now the amount is 20. So, and this is our freight amount. And the vendor number has changed it to 002. This is the vendor that we inserted in the condition as the transportation agent. So now you see we can post two invoices, two separate invoices, one for the freight, for the supplier that is the transportation agent. And the other, the other one is for the products or for the factory that sold us the chairs. So now I'm going to post this one for the freight. So the amount is 20 euros. Now, if you want to insert the taxes, you can check here. This is the tax code. And also, if you go here to the right, this is the tax code in the item. So for example, if we are buying different items, then you can have different tax code for each item. It all depends on the tax regulations in your country. So now I'm going to change this one and make it V2, for example, then hit enter. And here I'm going to change the header one to also V2. And then we have the same option as when we posted a supplier invoice without reference to a purchase order, which is you can either put the tax amount manually or you can click on calculate tax and SAP will do it automatically. So this is what I'm going to do. So now the tax amount is two, which is 10% from the 20. So the total amount I need to post now is 22 enter and this is the supplier invoice for the freight now in real cases or in real life this doesn't usually happen most of the time you have different amount in the invoice than what you received in the purchase order why there may be different reasons like customs are different duties are different the freight uh, are, is different anything so in any case, whenever you have a sub, an invoice amount that is higher than or lower than the purchase order amount, you can actually change this number. 
So it came by default from the purchase order, but now, for example, I'm going to change it to 25. Hit enter. So as you see, the tax amount changed it to 2.5, and the total amount is going to be 27.5. So now I have posted an invoice amount higher than what we agreed on with the supplier. So of course, you only do this after you get approval from a manager and then you can post the uh, invoice. You can also you also get a warning that you are posting an amount higher than what we agreed on. And actually in some projects for some companies, they request that this comes as an error. So no one can post an invoice amount that's different from the purchase order amount with a certain percentage. So for example, we only allow 2% up or down from the purchase order amount. After this, the accountant should get an error and he cannot proceed anyway. But in my system now, it is only a warning. So it is giving me a message that be careful, you are posting an invoice amount that's higher than the purchase order amount. You can click here to check the, error, uh, the warning. So price too high, tolerance limit of 5% exceeded. And again, we can switch this one to make it an error so no one can proceed. But in my case, you can proceed, it's okay. So now I'm going to post this invoice. And I got this message. So document number, document number created blocked for payment. Why is it blocked for payment? Because there is a standard default setting in the SAP system that whenever the invoice amount is higher than, is higher than the purchase order amount, then the invoice can be posted, but it goes as blocked for payment. So no one can pay this invoice until an authorized person goes and releases it. And this is a standard procedure. We can deactivate it if needed. So some companies can request to deactivate this. So if the invoice is posted, anyone can pay it. It all depends on the business you are working with. So now I have posted the invoice for the freight. Now to post the invoice for the uh, supplier of the products for the chairs, you can follow the same procedure. So again, insert the invoice date, insert a reference so it can be anything. Hit enter. Then in the purchase order or scheduling agreement, you can insert the purchase order number. And then this time I'm going to select goods service items. And this, uh, this came as 800 for 10 pieces. Again, you can change it, make it 850 if needed. The tax code is 19% for this one. I can leave it the same. So the total amount is 1011.5. And again, I have the warning because the amount is higher than what we agreed on in the purchase order and I can post this invoice. So now this is it for the demo today. So now you know how to create a purchase order. You know a very important function, which is how you can post separate invoices to separate suppliers with reference to the same purchase order. You also know how to process a goods receipt and how to post a supplier invoice and how to handle the value added tax in this process. So this is it for today and I will see you again next week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching my videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page, follow me on LinkedIn and also help me by sharing the videos so other people can find them.